Okay, let's get into a little programming now. Um, what we're going to go for is we're going to go for a nice basic trumpet kind of patch. Kind of a lead sound, the type of thing I use on Rosanna. I do variations on this kind of sound all the time. And uh, it's just something I want to share with you because uh, I find a lot of people have trouble with trumpet sounds. They have trouble getting the attack and uh, realizing the importance of the transient, which is the beginning part of the sound. And I do a little thing on, on analog synths, or really with any synthesizer, a thing that's called getting the blip or uh, achieving blip, as we say, which I'll share with you right now. Um, I'm going to start off, uh, we're going to use this Oberheim here. And uh, these concepts here I'll be using, you can apply to any kind of synthesizer. They work on a Jupiter, they work on anything. The important thing is this blip here. We all know usually envelopes, how we use them with filters and with amplifiers. The, the trick with the, with the blip, with the trumpet sound, getting the attack happening, is be able to blip or put an envelope, a quick, sharp uh, envelope on the... Um, the beginning part of the of the sound, the, the the beginning of the sound on the uh, on the oscillator, and specifically on just one of the oscillators, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We'll start off with a basic sound, the basic patch the Oberheim comes with, which is two sawtooth oscillators, fed through a filter, fed through an amplifier, and the filter is controlled by an envelope generator, and the amplifier is controlled by an envelope generator. This is just like a mini Moog, a stock mini Moog patch, or anything like that. And. Uh, what we'll do is we'll start off with our envelope on our... Uh, well, what I'll do is I'll differentiate. I'll show you the different envelopes, the three different envelopes we're, envelopes we're going to use on the amplifier, filter, and oscillator. Here we are with the amplifier. And I'll slow its attack up a little bit. You hear what that does. Okay? This is on the amplifier. Here's our filter. And we all know what our filter does. It filters out frequencies. Let's put an envelope on that. I'm exaggerating now. You hear what that's happening? Now let's take one of the oscillators. I'll tell you what, I'll turn one oscillator off. But we'll take this one oscillator here and we'll put an envelope on it. Not rather, uh, not an envelope on it. We'll have an envelope control it. Is what I mean to say. And it winds up sounding something like this. Just the same way that an envelope works for your volume or your filter, this is doing this on our frequency of our oscillator. And the whole trip of the blip is just to combine a straight static oscillator with one doing that. So together we got this now. Which doesn't sound like it's of much use, but we close. We make that envelope so quick. You can't really hear it. And we also adjust the amount that that envelope is, is, is modulating that oscillator, or controlling that oscillator. You can hear we're starting to get some semblance. Get it? Okay, let's talk for a little bit about string sounds. Um, string sounds can be difficult to program, being that um, what you want to do is accumulate as many subtleties as you can. And it's difficult sometimes to hear all those things you're going for, all those individual things you're programming in context, in perspective. Uh, once again, we'll use the Oberheim, and we'll um, start with a basic patch. And uh, what you try to do is just try to try to apply as many of these concepts as you can. Okay, we'll start off with just one oscillator. And what I like to use for my personal taste, I like to start off with with a um, with a pulse wave. A lot of people use um, a sawtooth, but um, I find pulse works best for me. What you want to do with string sounds is, is combine as many, you want to get your, your sound as complex as you can and with as much movement going on inside of it, as much animation happening as possible. And uh, I find that by combining frequency modulation, which is vibrato, in this, the way I'm using it here, and, uh, and pulse width modulation, 
which is the width of the pulse being varied, and combining those two, giving them individual LFOs. And this is done on each oscillator. So each oscillator has an individual LFO controlling its frequency, an individual LFO controlling its, its pulse width. And combining all this movement together gives you uh, a good starting place. Let's start with the, uh, that oscillator on a pulse with waveform. Let's narrow our pulse a little bit, make it a little bit thinner. There we go. And let's, uh, for working sake, let's go to our, our, our envelope that's on our amplifier and slow down the attack a bit. There we go. And give it some release. Like so. Okay, let's jump into a little LFO action here. Let's modulate the frequency of our oscillator with an LFO. Okay? There you go. Let's pull that down a bit. There's our amount control. Okay, now what I want to talk about here is scaling a little bit. Scaling and tracking. What you want to do is, uh, to get the most uh, mileage out of your string sounds, and this goes for a lot of instrumental sounds, you want to have the certain aspects of the sound that are going on tracking with the keyboard being that a sound changes from low to high as far as its range goes. Uh, violins, you find, you, you want your vibrato, you don't mind your vibrato being so fast and less intense. We're down low for basses and everything, and cellos, you want your vibrato slower. And uh, to get the most mileage out of one sound is, um, is desirable, to say the least. And you, we do this by having things like LFOs and filters track with the keyboard. Let me show you what I mean. For instance, here's this LFO, and I'm going to exaggerate it for our purposes here. And what I want to do is have the speed of that LFO track with my keyboard. So let's go to the LFO, and let's modulate the LFO with our keyboard. So what's happening now, the, the low frequency oscillator, which is modulating our LFO, is going to be played from the keyboard the same way that the oscillator that we're listening to, the audio oscillator, is. Exaggerated. You can hear what's happening. It gets much faster as we go up. Let's let's control the amount of that. And with string sounds, what you're going to see me doing a lot here is exaggerating what I'm going for, and then scaling it back. And um, as a matter of fact, scaling things way back because you don't want to hear vibratos and all these different, you don't want to hear these things so much. What you want to do is accumulate a lot of these different things together and hopefully you wind up with a rich, complex sound. Now I'm going to bring back the amount of that one. See, it's much slower down here. Now, to the same oscillator, let's take another LFO and modulate the width of our pulse, like so. And here there's a whole other LFO, and it's not modulating the frequency, it's modulating the width of our pulse. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that LFO, I'm going to have the LFO track with the keyboard so that it follows. The higher up I go, the faster that LFO speed will be. Okay, something what I like to do is I like to save along the way. Let's save the sound as I've got it right now. Okay? And we'll move on. And then see, this gives you an idea of what's happening. I've spent all that time on one oscillator. And what I want to do now is I want to repeat that. And um, I'll kind of go through it and talk as I'm doing it. But we're going to do the same thing again on the second oscillator. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna modulate the, uh, the frequency of the, of the oscillator. We're going to modulate the pulse width of the oscillator. Then we're going to modulate those LFOs that are modulating the oscillator. 
okay? And right now, I'm just using, I'm using the keyboard to modulate those LFOs. Usually, I use a variety of things. I'll use an envelope to modulate those LFOs so they speed up and slow down. I'll, uh, uh, there's, there's a variety of things to do. The, the, the point being to get your sound as complex as you can. So, let's turn off this oscillator. Let's go to our second oscillator, turn him on. And we'll quickly do the same thing again. But now I'm using individual LFOs. And uh, this is one of the features of this instrument, which is great, is that it has five LFOs. Most of your synthesizers won't have five LFOs. I'm just uh, doing this to exaggerate the point where you want, it's desirable to have as much different stuff going on as you can, as opposed to one vibrato happening to the whole thing. Let's do that again here. Again, I'll have the speed controlled by a keyboard. Hello, there we go. I'll adjust the width of the pulse. I'll adjust the amount of frequency modulation. Subtler. Okay, let's go to the, the pulse width and modulate our pulse width with another LFO. There's exaggerated. Again, let's have this LFO being tracked by the keyboard. And, you know, at this point, you start, you start thinking, well, man, are you really going to hear this fourth modulation being tracked by the keyboard or not? The point being is that these are all subtleties that accumulate. You don't want any one of them to stick out so much. You don't want anyone to be able to hear, ah, there's the, there's the speed being tracked by the keyboard or not. Um, hopefully, these are just things that accumulate. This is, these, this is the techniques that I use for string sounds. Again, what we're doing now is we're modulating our, our fourth LFO, which is modulating our second oscillator's pulse width. Stick with me now. Now for the fun part, we add our two oscillators together. And what I always do is I always like to detune them. And now I'm hearing too much overall uh, uh, frequency modulation on my oscillators. So what I'll just do is I'll go straight to them and I'll back the ball off a little bit. Here's part one to get a string sound. <laughs> 